Chris, let me start with you. Why is this a good decision? Surely, actually, the fact that there is now this increased demand is just going to place even more pressure on the system. Well, good evening. So there is huge demand by parents to send their children to grammar schools. So the fact that those grammar schools have expanded and there are more places available is a good thing because it's meeting demand by parents. But we should bear in mind that grammar schools are only a very small part of our system, a really very small part. Uh, Most of our uh, schools, the vast majority, over 95 percent, are not selective. And the good news is is that for those schools, performance over the last five or six years has been really good. There are nearly two million more pupils in good or outstanding schools now than there were eight years ago. So so the vast majority of schools that are not grammar schools are getting a lot better, which is a really good thing, I think. Rebecca Hickman, how do you respond to that? Um, Well, I think the concern about this growth in grammar schools is that it's expansion by the back door. We know that the government had actually wanted to put um, a bill before Parliament to um, enable more grammar schools to be created, which is currently not possible under the law. But they know now that they won't get that bill through Parliament, and so instead we're seeing all these grammar schools growing. But that doesn't seem very democratic, given that... um, Parliament clearly, um, at the moment, the will of Parliament is that there should be a general restriction on selection. Well, exactly. Chris, can, and Chris, can you respond to that? Because, of course, Parliament did oppose the opening of any new grammar schools. But this essentially is its still increasing the numbers. It's effectively increasing upping grammar schools, even if no more new ones are being opened. Well, I think, first of all, the increase in grammar school places I actually think is a good thing. I'm delighted by it. It's meeting parent demand. And if parents want more grammar school places, there's nothing undemocratic about providing demand um, for those parents who want to send their kids to those schools. I think it's a good thing. On the democratic sort of legitimacy point, um, the last time there was a, a kind of binding vote on this in Parliament was when, was in 1998, 20 years ago, when the ban on new grammar schools was introduced. We haven't, uh, certainly in the three years that I've been an MP, we haven't voted for it. And of course, the £50 million a year extra for new grammar school places or grammar school expansion um, you know, is part of the budgetary process. And of course, Parliament does vote on the budget. So there's democratic accountability there. But for me, the most important thing is that there are huge numbers of parents who want to send their children to a grammar school and allowing grammar schools to meet actually not all of that demand, a tiny amount of that demand, um, is a good thing. Let's not forget grammar school places are oversubscribed, like on average 10 to 1. So a little bit of expansion just meets some of that demand. And I think giving parents choice is a really good thing. Chris, um, I'm a parent and I do believe in parent choice. But I do I do have to say this to you. I, w- I grew up um, in the Midlands and I went to a comprehensive school. Mm. And it was a school where you had very bright kids from very bright backgrounds. You had parents, middle class parents who tutored their children. And then you had people like me who went to school. And my mum and dad couldn't afford very much, but I was OK. Mm. Now, having kids from all those different backgrounds in that community aspired me, a working class Asian girl. OK, it aspired me. It made me realise that what other people were out there what you could achieve and it was inspirational now you take all of those kids who can afford a good education and who did come from those um, you know educated backgrounds you take all of those out of my school and I would have been left with not very much inspiration can't see it can't be it and surely that is a bad thing well, the idea behind uh, the grammar school intake is, is definitely not that it kind of um, takes all the sort of better off parents who can afford to tutor their kids. But let me, let's, but cases, Chris, let me just come back to you on that because mm-hmm. because it does because it is the wealthy parents, it is the parents well, that can afford question. tutoring because you have to be tutored to get into these well, selection process so schools. Is, so that is so that is exactly what the government is now. So you're raising a fair point, first of all, but that is exactly what the government is trying to change. And there are some schools, funnily enough, including the King Edward VI group of grammar schools in Birmingham, where you grew up, who have actually done this really well. They've got their, the percentage of kids coming from free school meals backgrounds, so the, the poorest backgrounds, up to, from about 3% up to about 22%, which is around about the average for, for the greater Birmingham area. And they've done that a number of ways. They've given um, free tuition for the test to kids from poorer backgrounds. They've reached programs in primary schools 
in deprived areas. They've offered scholarships for travel, because often you've got to travel a bit further to get to a grammar school, and scholarships for kind of sports equipment and music equipment and that kind of thing. By doing those things, they've got they've got their intake so that it represents the local community. And in fact, next door to me in Croydon, um, Wallington County Boys School, which is just over the border in Sutton, have done similar things, and they've also got their free school meal intake right up. Now, not all grammar schools have done that. So your criticism Rebecca, do you... a moment ago... Rebecca, do you, do you, and the government wants all schools to copy Edward VI in Birmingham. Re- Rebecca, do you buy what Chris is saying there? No, because that's not what the government wants them to do. The government, um, the government hasn't said that um, it supports what um, the Birmingham schools are doing, which is effectively mm. lowering the pass mark. And the government is deliberately not saying they support that because they know it would be so unpopular amongst mm. the parents of current pupils. The vast majority of grammar schools in England to try to get their hands on this new pot of money are waving around policies that look like they're going to improve things on the ground and make absolutely absolutely no difference. In Buckinghamshire, we have 13 grammar schools, every one of which um, has in its policy that it will prioritise children on free school meals. Well, last year, out of 2,200 grammar school places in, in just this county, those po- that, as a result of those policies, 12 places were allocated to children on free school meals. That's mm. 0.5% of the total. The policies are worthless. They don't work. They're just an attempt to restore some credibility to a fundamentally unfair system. And to go back to the point that was um, made earlier, the pass rate of, um, of children from private schools sitting the 11 plus is three times the pass rate of children from state schools. Because I've got tutors, as Cyrus yeah, says. Exactly. exactly. But, but, but Rebecca, can I just put this? But, so hold on, Chris. Rebecca, can I just put this to you? Yeah. If a parent wants their child to go to a grammar school, it is their choice. Why are we trying to deny them that? Because surely their child shouldn't be the subject of social mobility and an experiment. That should be part of society. So why are you so against parental choice in grammar schools? Well, it's interesting because I've, I've never... I, you rarely hear grammar schools being talked about in the same breath as choice because the parents don't choose the grammar schools. The grammar schools choose the children. Um, and the majority of children who want to go to the grammar schools don't get into them. 75% or more get rejected. So it's not a system of choice. It's not even a system of selection. It's a system of rejection. And it's So why do parents want to put their children through that? Well, in, in counties like Buckinghamshire, they have no choice. We, we are a fully selected system. Kent is fully selected. There are fully selected systems all around the country, and the parents have no choice. Um, and, and we need to talk about what happens to the children who are rejected by the system, because most children in a grammar school system do less well than they would have done if they'd been in a comprehensive not system. That's not true. Um, yes, yes, I mean, that, I mean, that, that last point is absolutely true. Chris, just, that, that, that just, just point, Chris, wrap up, wrap up, wrap up, Chris, wrap up here, yeah, but, look, but, but just, just respond to that statistic look, from Rebecca. So, so, children from deprived backgrounds who go to grammar schools do, on average, one and a half grades better than the same child going to a non-grammar school. So, it really does help children from deprived backgrounds. We do have to do more work to make sure grammar schools. Let me finish. We do have to do more work to make sure. Grammar schools in counties like Buckinghamshire copy what King Edward VI and Wallington County boys have done. But finally, let's keep this in perspective. The £50 million a year for grammar school expansion represents just 1% of the government's school capital budget, and it represents 0.1% of all government spending on school education. So it really is a, mm. really a drop in the ocean of school spending. And I don't think people can really raise any reasonable objection to it. Parents well, will it's, well, do a little bit to meet that parent choice.